In July of 2021, I went to the Madawaska Canoe Center for five days of whitewater training. Oh, I should have done the crossover. While I didn't know exactly what to expect, I went with an open mind and a very strong intent to learn as much as I could. Before arriving at the course, I came up with three things that I was hoping to learn. First, I wanted to learn whitewater skills, especially safety related ones. I also wanted the opportunity to use an Esquif pocket canyon that was set up for whitewater in solo paddler mode. Finally, I hoped to come back with a clear understanding of how I wanted to outfit my personal Esquif pocket canyon so that I could use it in whitewater. None of these things were secret, and I did mention them prior to starting the course. For the first day, I didn't record anything, focusing instead on starting the learning curve. The learning curve was unexpectedly steep because I discovered three very important things. As someone who has mainly been a stern paddler in tandem boats, I have some great skills like J-strokes and sweeps. However, I ne never spent any time in the bow, so essential skills like the bow draw and cross bow draw were completely new to me. I spent the first two days focusing on trying to get a workable bow draw, and even by the end of the course it still needed significant improvement. The type of boats we were training in handled very differently than the boats I had always used up until now. They are designed to be always carving, which means learning to flow with the carve rather than trying on, to keep the right. boat going straight in the same way you do with the longer canoes like the pocket cannon. Everything in the course was about forward momentum. Sweeps, J-strokes, and even backstrokes were not encouraged because they all robbed the critical element of momentum which is needed for a successful carve through the water. The final element in the course was canoe selection. Most of the participants in the program were much, much lighter than I. As a result, the boats handled differently and it took me a while to find something that worked. You look more in control this time, eh, Jamie? Yeah, I think um, the paddle's different and I did some land drills because most of what screwed me up yesterday is doing this. Yeah. So, sorry. And then when I was switching like this, that's too much time. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so. Okay. Great. I'm <laughs> You're full of crap, but thank you. No, I mean, like, it was a. Yeah. I didn't go in. Was it? It was an S shape. You did one car into the other. Maybe you didn't carry that momentum all the way through, but the shape of the S was, was good. Nice. That's. So now it's just easier because it's on this side. So now, as you paddle, you paddle on the red side all the way down. Oh boy. Sorry. Ah, uh, it's okay. So keep paddling on the right side. And I'll paddle. Not so perfect this time. I think I missed the eddy. I think I missed the, uh, the fast current. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that made that other one like, look better as well is that you when you were padding on one side, you had your weight on that side as I well. I tilted better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that helped you to keep that car. I did not tilt this. This time I didn't tilt, right? Yeah, that's right. I know. I can't because my, my feet hurt too much. But even when they're down like that, you can put it at least so your toes touch you today. I did. It hurts. I, I'll do it again. I had it that way yesterday. I know it means less control, probably. Running the river is when my love of whitewater truly began. Ha 
<laughs> Bro, I'm liking this stuff. That was awesome, man. Once the pain in my legs was so bad that I quietly sat along the shore for 30 minutes and just watched. This allowed my legs a chance to stretch out and for some of the pain to go away. We all took swims in the first few days. You don't learn if you aren't willing to try. <laughs> Take the boat out of there. Roger that. Oh no. Now I'm doing non whitewater tricks. Oh, there again, again. Get over, get over. There we go. Yeah, when you do it, uh -huh. um, if you do smaller correction more often... It'll so, do, that's a cadence thing. Uh, no, but even like with that J-stroke, so if you you were doing like a J-stroke to be able to correct your boat... Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that now, yeah. sorry. So if you do it more often, smaller J-strokes, it will help you to go straighter and faster. Okay. Then if you do a big one every two or three, you know, three strokes. Okay. Yeah, I can believe that. So the farther ahead. Ah. You want me to hold your boat if you don't? Sure. Go My on. knees are just gone. Yeah. Sorry, man. I hope I'm not letting it down. Ouch. Oh. I'm gonna take some painkillers when I get back. Ah. This was the absolutely worst pain point. Each day after this, the pain lessened as my muscles became more used to the demands being placed upon them. Right into a foot cruncher. Thank you. That was a lot of fun going down those rapids at the end. Huh? I'm happy to hear that. Oh, I loved it. It was awesome. That's cool. And you're right, it's way easier than doing tricks, isn't it? Yeah, we do tricks so we are good to do harder maneuvers and bigger rapids later on. I'll get your boat if you want to. Go. No, I'll get my boat. Oh, that's okay. I'll no, wait. I'll do Well, unless you think I would be too slow, then you can take no, it. No, it's okay. Okay. I carry my own. Battle, then. But I am going to switch boats, okay? Yeah. Switching boats helps significantly. I think I want to take a stretch. After that, we'll kind of just let down those rapids and uh, the bridge once again. Oh. Oh, yeah. I do not mean to be a crybaby. Damn, that hurts.
this isn't good. It's Noble Endeavors coming to you. Get ready for some escapades and adventures too. Enjoy the journey and the fun we're